What's good, YouTube? Picasso Kobe here. So, we got a request from Dean again. Some more Farnsy for you. A whiter shade of pale. This is a Procol Har Harum. Procol Harum. Okay. Cover 1960. Okay. 1960s is when this came out. Yeah. So, this is a cover song. We got a cover song by John in this one, A Whiter Shade of Pale. I might have heard this before. That title sounds really, really familiar. I may have heard this song at some point. I'll know once it starts if I've heard it for sure or not. A progressive rock group, Procol Harum is what they were called. So, a progressive rock group. That's a John doing some progressive rock in this one. That's what we're getting. I like that. I like that John gets into different things like this. It's always awesome. His cover selection is awesome. His covers are always on point. So, thank you, Dean, for your request. I appreciate you. Subscribe if you guys are new here. We talk about mental health, addiction, world issues, everything in between. Break down all the lyrics, the instrumentation. I got the whole nine yards for you guys. I'm busting the lyrics out. You know that. I cover the whole lyric sheet. Every bar gets taken into account and analyzed as a as the story of the song and we have great discussions about life situations specific instances in life mental health all of that everything in between and addiction and mental health are very personal to me i'm a recovering alcoholic and drug addict and it's been a hell of a journey it took a long time to pull myself out of it it has not been easy Staying sober is one of the hardest fucking things ever after you've done that for your whole entire life, including your high school years. So I know all about it. I get the struggle and I fully respect anyone who's managed to pull themselves out of it. And anyone who wants to go get help, I respect you too. And you definitely should go do that for yourself because you can live a much better life. You can settle in to achieving your dreams and being more goal-oriented and actually chasing the things that you want to see in your life and actualizing those, making them become a reality. You can help other people that are also going through the same thing and help them to better themselves through your own experience and stories. So that's what it's all about on here. I love you guys. Thank you so much for everything. We're going to get into it for you. Thank you again, Dean. I'm Bacasa Kavi, a reaction video a day or two. Keep the doctor away. Fuck those apples. John Farnham, a whiter shade of pale. Mm. I might have heard this before. Oh, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> we skip the lights and then go. Oh. Oh, yeah, it's this song. Okay. <laughs> John. Like I said, his cover selection is brilliant. He picks great covers, man. Absolutely every single time. I like this song. I don't know all the words to this song. It's a song I've heard in passing and always liked the sound of. It's one of those songs for me. I haven't heard it many times, but I know it. I've definitely heard it. I've never paid much attention to the words. I've just always loved the vibe of it. So I'm excited to see what these words are all about. We skip the lights and then go. We turn cartwheels across the floor. I was feeling kind of seasick. The crowd called out for more. Coming harder as the ceiling flew away. Wow. We call out for another train. Wow, that power. The way to walk the train. And wow. That's really deep. 
that's a deep horse right there. I like it. We skipped the light fondango. <laughs> Makes me think of the fucking WWE wrestler. <laughs> Turned cartwheels across the floor. Uh-huh. I was feeling kind of seasick, but the crowd called out for more. Ah, oh, dancing your heart out, huh? <laughs> the room was humming harder as the ceiling flew away. Wow. When we called out for another drink, the waiter brought a tray. Yeah. Something like that. Pretty much. <laughs> I don't have much else to say about that. That's just wonderfully written. It's beautiful. I love the descriptors in it. I love it. It's just describing a social gathering, but all of the little feelings and nuances that go on inside of it, right? Turning cartwheels across the floor, feeling kind of seasick, like anxious and rocked because you've been drinking, obviously. The crowd called out for more. The room was humming harder as the ceiling flew away. Could be talking about performing. Also, you're the performer. Feeling seasick on stage. But then, no. It's because when we called out for another drink, the waiter brought a tray. So they are sitting at a table having a social gathering. But yeah, I love the descriptors. They're very creative. That's awesome right there. I like that. Farnsey over here that belt that he hit i always love when he hits belts like that you guys know i really enjoy when he uses his more loud voice right from time to time he hits a belt that just blows you away he really nailed it inside of this one i like it a lot that later, as the miller told his tale, that her face at first just ghostly turned a whiter shade of pale. So, check this out. Check this out right here. I love it when we get stuff like this. The miller's tale is one of Chaucer's 14th century Canterbury tales. This tale by drunk Robin the Miller is about a carpenter and his wife setting the tone for this song, Story of Parting, Drinking, and Sex, as we can see, right? <laughs> yeah. Robin the Miller playing a bagpipe. Ah, there's a picture of him playing a bagpipe. On top of... Is that a fucking wolf? I don't know, it's like a cave painting almost. It's like really old. Right? It's like Keith Reed to Song Facts. This is what people ask me right off. You know, they all started saying, Oh, Chaucer, the Miller's Tale. I've never read the Miller's Tale in my life, he says. Maybe that's something that I knew subconsciously, but it certainly wasn't a conscious idea for me to quote from Chaucer. No way. Hey, that's wild. Sometimes you accidentally do stuff like that. Yeah, when you're writing. That can happen, definitely. Wow. That was a cool annotation right there. So he's not telling that story, but people took it that way. It's been taken that way, and he actually learned something from it. That's neat right there. I like that. That's neat. <laughs> instrumentation is fantastic. I really like the instrumentation in this. It's beautiful. 
very crisp and clean on the recording as well. This is a nice recording right here. John sounded amazing in that chorus. His voice is so smooth, man. He's got the smoothest fucking voice, I'll tell you what. So, let's get in to the rest of this song. I'm excited to see where this lyric sheet goes, because it's really creative so far. She said there is no reason And the truth is plain to see That I wandered through my play cards That we're leaving for the coast And although my eyes were open Wow They might just as well have been closed And so <sighs> This story is fucking wild Okay Wow so we got, she said there is no reason and the truth is plain to see, but I wandered through my playing cards and would not let her be. One of 16 Vestal virgins who were leaving for the coast, and although my eyes were open, he says, they might have just as well have been closed. <sighs> wow. The shit that we get into on this channel sometimes. What a story. So, here we go. We gotta cover this first and foremost for anyone. One of 16 Vestal Virgins is the first thing that we must cover. The Vestal Virgins were the priestesses of Vesta, goddess of hearth in ancient Rome. There were actually six. Six priestesses and twelve novices of them with much influence on the going on in ancient Rome. And there's a photo of it too, the house of them, the ancient architecture. Wow. Lord, that's a, that is a hell of a fucking reference right there. That was one of the best references I've heard in the song. There's annotations for all of this, like explanations and stuff. She said there is no reason and the truth is plain to see. So, this was, oh, so this was originally the last verse is what the annotation says. Wow. Very clearly set to leave. He says, but I wander through my playing cards. He says, yeah. Leaving for the coast. Maybe referring to Vesta's in Ephesus, Turkey, which is one is on the coast of the uh, the Aegean Sea. I got gotcha. you. Aegon, maybe Aegon, Aegon, probably Aegon. I would imagine. Yeah, the oxymoron of eyes being open, but might as well have been being closed. His physical eyes were open and watching cognitively, not conscious, seeing the events in their meaning, essentially. This is a wild story right here. I mean, fuck, bro. Yeah. The, the analogy of <laughs> using the Vestal Virgins as the analogy for, like, leaving, but also empowerment and much going on behind the scenes and shit like that like this is a hell of a fucking song this makes you think about the world and general situations of life and how everything kind of runs really a lot deeper than surface level inside of life that's what this is about it's beyond surface level he's talking about subconsciously like having your eyes closed and all kinds of shit and social situations and stuff. This is beautifully written. Like the cho choice of metaphor. 
and descriptors and this is very nice this is a solid lyric sheet right here and Farmsy's over here killing it doing his thing <laughs> That her face at first just goes red Turned to white shade of Farnsy version. This lyric sheet continues. Fuck, that's a good song right there. That's a good fucking song right there. One of my favorites. Probably popped up because it's on my playlist. It comes on sometimes. You gotta love that song. This lyric sheet continues down for two more verses. Yeah, let's cover those. First off, though, Farnsy. Is amazing. His voice sounds so good on this one. I really liked his voice on this one. The way he carried it out, the belting, the band, the horns, the strings, the bass, drums, everything about this. Everything about this was beautiful. Always beautiful with Farnsey's backing band. They are fantastic. So, these next verses here, I was scrolling over them while Farnsey was singing his last chorus. This right here is awesome. So there's an additional verse here. It's literally called additional verse instead of verse 3. But it's called additional verse. And then it just skips to the next verse with the actual number after that. I don't know why, but I'm sure they had their reasons. Maybe it's when they switch in and out and don't always do all the time. It could be that. Sometimes they might not always do this one. So this one said, She said, I'm home on shore leave, though in truth we were at sea. So I took her by the looking glass and forced her to agree, saying, You must be the mermaid who took Neptune for a ride. But she smiled at me so sadly that my anger straightway died, bro. <laughs> This guy's storytelling is insane, dude. The references and everything. Holy crap. What a way. She claims to be on the shore. He replies that they're at sea. <laughs> well, it does give credence to one of the theories that the story indeed takes place on a boat with a seasick line. It could be a symbol for the irreconcilable differences between the two that led to the initial separation. That's, yeah, that would make sense for the metaphor, yeah. I took her by the looking glass and forced her to agree, saying, You must be the mermaid who took Neptune for a ride. Okay, so here we go. Here's the true story of Neptune and the maid. As the cold wind blows and the sea rages with waves, there lived a girl who was quite unusual. She had a long green slimy tail that replaced where legs would be. This peculiar figure was a mermaid. This mermaid was called... Uh, she had long brown hair that dangled from her brain. Mm-hmm. Damn. <laughs> His references are insane, though. But that, this is a bar. She smiled at me so sadly that my anger straight away died. <coughs> That's a bar right there. Man. Sad smiles will do that. For sure. The last verse. If music be the food, listen to this, if music be the food of love, then laughter is its queen. That is fantastic. Whew. Wow. 
This is an allusion to the opening lines of William Shakespeare's comedic play Twelfth Night, If Music Be the Food of Love, Play On. Ah, nice. These references are insane. Wow. I like that. And likewise, if behind is in front, then dirt in truth is clean. Sheesh. An interesting statement, they said. On the surface, the writer presents an oxymoron. Dirt is clean. But the truth somehow bridges the gap. The whole truth being told leaves one clean, not needing to lie. Hence the expression to come clean. Right? Exactly. My mouth, he said. <laughs> this guy said. My mouth by then, like cardboard, seemed to slip straight through my head. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking bars. These are bars right here. Beautiful writing. He said, my mouth by then, like cardboard, seemed to slip straight through my head, so we crash dive straightway quickly and attacked to the ocean bed. <sighs> Is this a story about a guy getting abducted by a mermaid? And the... That her face at first just ghostly turned a whiter shade of pale, so it was that later as the miller told his tale that her face at first just ghostly turned a whiter shade of pale. Oh. Hold up. Did they write a... Hold on. I have to look at the description. Hold on. What's the description for this say? It was the first and famous hit single by them. Okay, hold on. Here we go. Here we go. I was like, did he just tell the story of somebody being, like, quite literally taken by a mermaid? But hold on, here he says, I was trying to conjure a mood as much as tell a straightforward girl leaves boy story with the ceiling flying away and room humming harder. I wanted to paint an image of a scene. He said, I wasn't trying to be mysterious with those images. I was trying to be evocative. That makes sense. Suppose it seems like a decadent scene I'm describing, but I was too young to have experienced any decadence at that time. I might have been smoking when I conceived. <laughs> that would make sense. This is that. Yeah, it sounds like it. That would add up, but not when I wrote. I got you. I got you. It was influenced by books, not drugs. Yeah, I can tell by the annotations. Wow. This is beautiful right here. What a lyric sheet. And Farnsy killed it as always. Farnsy's always doing his thing on these. He's doing an amazing job with the covers. Pro Call Harem. Whiter Shade of Pale. Farnsy cover. I love this lyric sheet. This is one of my favorites we've ever done. So poetic. The metaphors and uh, descriptors inside of this are beautiful. This is one of my favorites. Hey. <laughs> he said what he thought it was. But... You could take it a lot of different ways. All music's open to interpretation. So whatever you want to take this story as. Very, very beautifully written. No matter what. At the end of the day. I loved this right here. One of my favorites that we've done. As a lyric breakdown specifically. This was a fun lyric breakdown to do right here. Farnsy. Killing it on the vocals as always. Never expect anything but that from him. He's always doing a fantastic job with his vocals. So I'm glad we got to do this. This is a nice cover. Dean, thank you again for your request, my friend. I appreciate you a lot. The original video for this will be in the description. As always, subscribe to Farnsy. Support the artists we have on the channel. It's what we do this for. Get the music out into the world. Relate it to our own lives. Discuss the awesome topics inside of these songs. This was a really fun one to break down. Lots of literary references. Callbacks and spins on some Shakespeare inside of here. The callbacks to ancient Rome. Like with the Vestal Bars. Fucking crazy, dude. Mermaid references. Neptune references. Attacking the ocean bed at the end. Farnsey skipped that part. He skipped the mermaid part, too. I can understand that. That's That might not be necessarily a Farnsey kind of thing. <laughs> right? I can understand him going with his own version of it and style on it. 
taken out some of the words. I understand. I get that when it comes to Fonzie, specifically with his lyric sheet, right? That makes sense that he put it to his own style. I want to go listen to the original of this now so that I can hear those actual verses inside of the original version of it as well. I really enjoyed this a lot. This was a super, super good cover and a great lyric sheet for real. Like I always say, if you're struggling with addiction or mental health, please go get yourself help. I promise you things get better. I promise you you can live a better life for yourself. And it's not always going to be easy every day, but it's going to be better than it was before every day. And that's the most important. You're going to be able to also inspire and help other people with your own experience and the advice that you can offer through that and what you have been through. So always keep that in mind when you're struggling with those things. Anyone that's struggling with that, please go get yourself some help. You deserve a better life and we all deserve to just not be stuck inside of those cycles that weigh a person down the way that addiction and mental health will. It's always better to reach out for help even though it feels uncomfortable sometimes. I promise you it's better on the other side and it's worth it. Put in the work and go kick some ass. I love you guys. We're going to get out of here on Vacasa Kavi. A reaction video a day or two. Keep the doctor away. Fuck those apples. Leave a like for me. Comment those suggestions. Subscribe up this way. Bang the notification bell for me. I'll see you guys in the next ones. I love you so much. Thank you for everything. Have a blessed night. Peace.